multi-port, wet kit, multi-stage, nitrous, on a bush plane, scrappy. <laughs> Let's get to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Nitrous! Okay, so there's gonna be a bunch of you, if there aren't, I'll be surprised, that just automatically don't go, oh my gosh, Mike is gonna blow his motor up. <laughs> Let's not do that, I don't wanna do that. So there's a reason why people have a fear of nitrous and it's very, very justified. Nitrous is notoriously known for exploding people's motors and there's a reason for it, a couple reasons. One, obviously, if they don't know how to do it and they install it wrong, they don't get the mixtures right, the jetting right, or the most common is actually someone doing nitrous and doing all the work and they get it installed perfect. They get everything done. They do a nice wet kit instead of a dry kit or they did a dry kit and they timed their fuel injectors to pulse longer pulses on every injection spurt to change at the time the nitrous hits and map out the air fuel ratio perfectly. They did it that way by computer or they did it by jets with a wet kit and they have it right and they make awesome power. They throw 100 horse, 200 horse at a Chef 350, and it's perfect. Here's where the explosion comes in. It's like giving a racer a little bit of cocaine. It works so good. And they're like, oh my gosh, I know I'm not supposed to do this, but for this little $20 jet, and I've done all this work already, I can change my 200 horse kit to 250 three, four, five, and every time they do it, it adds so much more power. They feel so good about their wonderful, strong built motor that they push it too far and then they grenade it. So this is a, a trial of discipline, knock on wood. I've never blown a motor in nitrous and I've been doing nitrous on everything you can imagine since I was, just when I got my driver's license, I started nitrousing everything. And so, so far I haven't damaged it and I'm, done really well at keeping discipline in the limits. I'm gonna start right off the bat by showing you the tiniest little part of nitrous install. Right here is attached to uh, Airflow Performance's uh, fuel servo. I always wanna call it a throttle body because of automotive days. But my fuel servo, right back here, we see, you see an adapter plate we put in and it's got two nitrous nozzles and each nitrous nozzle, nozzle on those nozzles are only 25 horsepower piece. They're babies, it's 50 horsepower. I'm gonna pause the video right here for a quick second, guys. So I'm gonna dive into the nitrous. Heat, pressures, turbo, all kinds of nonsense, relays, regulators, how it engages, how I operate it. You're about to hear 15 minutes of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so if you don't wanna hear some of the more technical stuff, people have asked for it. I'm gonna ramble, be ready <laughs> for rambling. You can skip ahead if you want. And each nitrous nozzle, nozzle on those nozzles are only 25 horsepower piece. They're babies, it's 50 horsepower. So, but on each one of those, you see a Y coming out. That just lets you know uh, that you have a wet kit. One is nitrous injection, one is fuel. So that when the nitrous is hit, I get fuel and nitrous blended perfectly at the air fuel ratio. So I'm not doing anything on the mixture on the aircraft. You get distracted briefly. Um, Don at Airflow Performance has been um, doing all my systems, my fuel controller or fuel servo, throttle body, whatever you want to call it, uh, for years on all my race planes. They're awesome. And Don actually, we got carried away talking about nitrous systems and uh, we collaborated on doing a really unique nitrous system that's way more than that. So let's show you how much more horsepower we're going to add to Scrappy. Walk this way. Here we go, guys. This is my nitrous system. If you're familiar with nitrous, this looks like a whole lot more is going on than is typical. And that's because there is, and I'm gonna dive into it. First of all, Scrappy makes 500 horse-ish, depending on RPM. I wanna take it to 600 horse. So if you noticed on the past video right there, yes, for those of you who noticed, that is a exotic race cars push to start button but this push for 600 horsepower right here, uh, we engraved ourselves and then painted it orange to match the panel. So 600 horsepower is where I'm gonna take this engine to. 
Now, that means 100 horsepower of nitrous would take me there at sea level. If you look really close at my dash, and I'll pop it up on the screen here in a second, there are three switches along here, and they are labeled 50 horsepower, 100 horsepower, and another 100 horsepower. So 51, one. They engage these solenoids appropriately, and I won't dive into it, but there's blue is nitrous, red is fuel, and the solenoids operate according to the wiring we did right there. Don built this up. Don, you did a great job. Thank you for doing this. We divided and conquered while he was making this system. We designed it on SolidWorks. I sent him over my air box I made, and then we collaborated and did it, and then he put this all together. So, Don, you're a stud, thank you. While he was doing this, I was doing inside the panel, the wiring, circuitry, all the tie-ins, lines, takes, contactors inside the aircraft. And so, my system will plug into this, and we're off to the races. Let me describe those three switches. It's really simple. Let me go through it this way. It's 50 horsepower switch. I could close that one, open up a 100 horsepower switch, close that one, and open up the 50 and the 100 gives me 150, or two 100 switches gives me 200, or all three switches gives me 250. Only three switches, but in any configuration, I can go from no nitrous to 250. There's literally five different stations from zero to 250 and 50 horsepower increments. All wired together. Now it sounds complicated, but it's actually really, really simple. All that's actually happened is I'm predetermining the nitrous level I want to run, which is about 600 horsepower is where I'll take this engine, and then flipping the switches that will get me to that horsepower at a given density altitude. If I'm at sea level, I may only max out at 100 horsepower nitrous. When I flip the switch, nothing happens. It actually just activates everything that I want to occur here when a second event happens. That second event is on my throttle. You don't want to run nitrous until you're wide open throttle. So at WOT, your throttle's all the way. I'm putting a high tension spring that will kind of stop your hand naturally at full throttle. But if I push into that spring, detent, it will then make a final contact and then engage whatever I have pre-selected on switches. So my hands are never reaching for the dash and flipping switches or doing anything. I'm never having to think about what I'm going to do and how much horsepower I want while I'm flying. That would be dangerous. So really all I'm doing is looking at a simple chart I'm making that maps out max head pressures at a given density altitude. We lose horsepower with altitude. So I'm making a chart that will just tell me at 7,000 feet, to make 600 horsepower on this engine, I need these switches. And so I would just label every horsepower level, and then I can switch to that horsepower real simply by just selecting it, and then I don't even need it. I can actually just know that it's there if I want it. So why would I use nitrous instead of turbo? It's actually really simple. I really don't even need 500 horsepower. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. But it is nice to have the option if I'm landing and I got a set of floats on here in Alaska, and I'm trying to land at a lake that no one's ever landed on before, which is my intention, to go to some really high altitude glacier lakes. The density altitude may be 16, 17, 18,000 feet. So what I need to be able to do is it get into a lake that's so short that any other plane that if it were to land on it would not get airborne. There wouldn't be enough distance or power to get off. So I want the option to land places no one has ever been. And if I need, I don't wanna get on a lake and then use all the lake and have no buffer left. I wanna, I wanna be on a little glacier lake and know that I can get airborne in half the distance. And so that's what this is all about. And because it's general aviation experimental, we can do whatever we want, so why not? <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm gonna be able to select any horsepower I want. I'm gonna set my, my beginning limit at 600. Yes, this engine can handle more. How much more can it handle? Um, there is a general rule of thumb when building lots of past race engines, cars, planes, um, and that all is relative to the cubic inches of the motors. If you have a Chev small block 350 cubic inch engine and you've built the components appropriately and set up the nitrous correctly, we could add about one additional horsepower for every cubic inch to have a good, reliable race type nitrous system. That would mean a 350 cubic inch engine, 
350 more horsepower on top of its existing horsepower. That's a general rule of thumb and there's all kinds of boring stuff that moves that up and down drastically. I have 780 cubic inches. Would that mean I'd go to 780 additional horsepower? It wouldn't because there's one giant variable that moves it and that's just RPM. I can't run 6,000 RPM. The lower the RPM, there's a formula to back out. A lower RPM also means lower horsepower limits. So if I take that into consideration, I'm gonna pull down what I would feel relatively comfortable bumping an additional about 380 to 400 horsepower because of the RPM adjustment. Do I wanna run 380 more on top of 500? No, <laughs> I'm not going to. Even though that is a general guideline, I wanna go about half that. So I wanna be able to go, and it's significantly less than that. If I have 500, I'm gonna go to six. That's only 100 horsepower more, not 380 to 400. It's almost a quarter the back down limit for RPM. Yes, this engine can handle more than the 600 I put on it. And I will engage significantly more than that during my testing. And then I'm gonna back down and determine the limit I want. I'll put knock sensors and everything else on the engine during my ground thrust test. And I'm gonna play with all the limits up to my comfort level. Then I'm gonna back it way down for that. And I'm gonna placard the inside of my aircraft and it'll be placard with altitude. So. Uh, scrappy, we're gonna label it 600 horsepower, but I can throw up to 250 horsepower in nitrous shot if I wanna hold 600 horsepower at a much higher altitude. The unique difference specifically from a turbo or supercharger or nitrous is heat and weight. There's a huge positive to nitrous and a huge downside to nitrous. The biggest positive to nitrous, the highest Horsepower increase for the least amount of weight, hands down is nitrous. And it actually, done correctly, can be one of your safest horsepower increases because heat is what destroys a motor, gets the metal soft, and melts things, valves have problems, everything goes bad with heat. A turbo will take air and it will compress it. Every time you compress every PSI of air, you're gonna increase a set and exact number of temperatures of degree in that air through compression. So you can actually quickly say, if I wanna add 20 PSI of pressure in a turbo, I know exactly how many degrees of heat I'm gonna increase into the intake of the engine, which means I need to reject more heat, everything's hotter, and now you're running intercoolers and everything else to back that back down. Turbos, hands down the best way to go for a cross country cruiser because it can do it indefinitely. Other side of nitrous. Nitrous, you gotta pack a bottle and you measure it by how many seconds you can run a given nitrous level on a certain 12 pound bottle or two 12 pound bottles. And it's all math, it's really simple. You have to determine how often you're gonna have it. Why wouldn't I just put a turbo on Scrappy or twin turbo? Well, I went through all the math and really it boils down to simply this. Scrappy with the engine that's on it will already absolutely V and E the aircraft. Fly it fast enough to do damage to the airframe, tail, everything else. I don't need any more horsepower than what's already on it. It's be complete waste other than climb out or launch. So launch is gonna be fun on this. <laughs> I can't wait for testing. <laughs> anyway, sorry, squirrel. Um, I can't wait to play with all that. A twin turbo to power this engine, nearly a hundred pounds all in. <laughs> no thanks. But turbos are so great for constant it's always available, nitrous isn't. The ultimate deciding factor for me really comes down to, I will likely use nitrous less than one-tenth of one percent, or less than that, almost never. I don't believe you. It's really for fun, <laughs> just because, and to just give me that little extra if it's high and hot and I wanna get up and out. So we're gonna keep that nitrous level low and we can save a ton of weight by going with nitrous rather than turbos and in cruise flight i don't need 500 horse i'm going to keep it way pulled back let's dive into this system right here and why there's more all these little jets down here i got eight and eight for each cylinder the one button up here that does the 50 horsepower shot 
That's actually going to activate a series of solenoids here, fuel and nitrous, that run the two ports right on the intake of the air right on the front. That I want to keep a very small boost because there is a chance and you don't like to do really heavy nitrous boosts at that intake location because even though I've made big trumpeted inlets and have a really well flowed intake system, they'll spray and there's two of them spraying in at the same time and it fans out. It should be really even and add 50 horsepower divided amongst eight cylinders. But if I was doing a lot, sometimes that air might put more air or nitrous and fuel blend to this cylinder better than it does that cylinder. It's that voodoo magic that starts to happen in air boxes. If you have an air box that isn't flowing perfectly is why you, you never wanna do more than just a little bit of horsepower in nitrous, injecting it in front of the air box. So for the bigger horsepower boost, which is another 100 horse switch, and the second 100 horse switch, I'm doing ports into the intake, right into the intake, few inches back with the ports pointed, spraying right up into it. And there'll be two on each intake, uh, intake pipe. That guarantees that every single cylinder on the bigger nitrous shots is perfectly distributed on all eight cylinders. And I don't get an imbalance of 20 or 30 more horsepower on this cylinder and 10 on that one, and that is where you can create problems. So that's where it's gotten a little more complex and it's being done right at the port. When I have two in there, one set of solenoids can activate one and give me 100 horse, uh, uh, a few horsepower to each cylinder, totaling 100. Um, the other one, if I want 200 horse, will inject simultaneously and I can select it. So first switch does the two, second switch does that set, third switch, does that set, each one of them can be done independently or together. So that's where the, the ability to adjust at any time is. All of which is completely simplified by deciding the power and only getting the nitrous when you armed it and pushed it through the detent spring on the throttle. That's my nitrous system. I'm really excited about it. Uh, nitrous, there's one other thing that where nitrous really allows you to add a lot of horsepower with added safety if you keep it in check. And that is nitrous does the opposite of turbos where it's increasing, like I already mentioned, about nine degrees of temperature for every one PSI of compressed air. It excites the air molecules. The faster they move, the hotter they get. The reverse happens when you pull it apart, cools the air rapidly. Nitrous, because you're pulling, the air is already compressed in the tank. When it comes out of the nozzles, it vaporizes and expands and you'll drop the intake temperatures depending on the nitrous shot, but easily 40 degrees. And if you have a small, it might be less than that. If you have a big kit, it can be more than that. But one, you add heat, which decreases horsepower, puts more wear on the engine. The other, you remove heat, super cool it, which allows you to get more power, safer, with cooler temperatures and not all the extra weight. Gosh, that is a mouthful. I hope I didn't bore the crap out of you guys. <laughs> I love it, it's really exciting to me and uh, I've had a lot of fun with it. We are gonna get it out there and we are gonna pump this thing up, hammer it down, test it out, ring it all out first. Um, we've actually already pressure test, purged and ran this whole system out of the aircraft to make sure that there's no leaks and everything's ready to go. This solenoid is my purge. I'll show you that in a second over there, but purge, so that's my fuel reduction, my purge, nitrous 100, nitrous 100, nitrous 50, and then the reds, 100, 100, 50 in fuel. That's the breakdown of what all this is. It's all ready to go. Um, purge, you know what purge is? It's cool. So purge is um, really needed, but for me, I think it just looks cool. Whenever you change a nitrous bottle out, all the lines have now been uh, allowed to open up when you disconnect it and let air into the system. We don't want to hit a button that trips the solenoid and fuel injects, but the nitrous doesn't because there's a big empty line of air, not nitrous. And so for a quick flash of a second, you have fuel, no nitrous, then the nitrous fills the line, gets to the nozzle, and then adds it. So you go from a perfect mixture, no activation, to too rich, 
and then a blast of nitrous out of order. So first you gotta purge that line. So this is how I did it. I kind of tried to hide it in here, but you can see this is a traditional static port for your pitot static system. This is an LED and this is actually my nitrous port. It looks like a static port, but this is my purge. There's one on each side of the plane and you want to know that you've completely purged the line. So up here on my nitrous panel, I have a purge button. If I push it, it lights up an LED on both sides. The purpose of that LED is to light up the blast of air coming out that quickly changes to nitrous. It will go white and almost look like a cloud blasting out. The blue light is to light it up. And then you're 100% sure before you use your nitrous that there's no air in the system. It actually runs the nitrous from the bottle all the way to the solenoid assembly, through the assembly, and back up into the airplane and back out to here. So it's actually purged the whole system to an exit. So when I command nitrous at my throttle position, we are gonna get fuel and nitrous only injected. That's the purge button. It's actually pretty cool. I can't wait to turn it on. It'll make lots of hissing and big puffs of smoke and look like a bowl ready to charge. Stop steaming up my tail. So, I don't know. <laughs> Silly things I like. Anyway, that's my nitrous. Let's try not to blow it up. I'm gonna keep it a baby, baby system. That should be awesome. Let's cross our fingers. Let's get to work. <laughs> 